In this lesson, we'll set a few things up in our scene to work faster, and we'll also begin blocking in our animation. The scene is 04 Begin. So you can see the initial pose has already been blocked in for both characters. You can see our heroine is very confident and has really no concern about who's going to be the winner in this fight simply because she knows in her heart that she will overcome. She will conquer the red character. And, and as far as the red character is concerned, of course, uh, very bent on taking out the blue character. As you can see in her initial pose, she's ready to make her strike. So it's always a good idea to get inside your character's minds, become the character. That way you can have fun throughout the project because your, your heart's in it. So keep that in mind when animating any character. So with that said, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and turn on our nerves curve so we can grab our animation controls. What we're going to do is just create a, a few buttons on our shelf. That way we can grab the controls that are responsible for translating the character around a lot faster. So that will be our arm controls, the legs, and our center of gravity. Let's go through and grab those. We'll grab it on one character. It'll be a lot easier to set the script up that we're about to create to grab the second character that way. So, again, we'll just go through. We could always start at the feet. Grab our feet controls. Grab the knees. Next, we'll grab our center of gravity control. These uh, arrows. We'll grab the arms. And the elbows. So with these controls selected, if we were to go to our move tool, you can see that we can use these to translate our character around. Okay, great. So let's head over to our script editor now and grab the code that was used to select those objects. So we started with our left leg control. We'll grab from there. And we'll go ahead and highlight until we get to the last control we selected, which was the character's elbow. I'm now go ahead and copy that, paste that in the script editor, and we'll create a procedure from this. So we'll go one line above, and we'll type in proc, followed by the procedure name. We'll call this femctrl for control. Open and close parentheses. Open curly bracket. And now, at the the bottom of the code will put a closed curly bracket. So Maya will know what to run when we run our procedure, which is fem control. All right, so all we need to do from here is go ahead and use the same type of code for the villain. So if we were to go ahead and grab one of her objects, one of her controls, you can see she has a naming scheme of fem underscore two. I've actually imported this character in. After referencing the first one, I imported the second rig in. So that's why we have this namespace. All right, so all we need to do is make sure we add that namespace so that Maya will select the, the correct objects for the second code. So let's go ahead and highlight everything here, copy. Go a few lines under, paste. We're just about finished with this. Let's go to our channel box and grab the namespace fem underscore two colon. We'll copy that and add that to our second code. So starting from the line at the top, we'll just go ahead and paste that in. Do that for the others. Paste, paste, paste. Just a few more. We'll also want to change our procedures name. So let's go ahead and put a two after fem. And we're good to go here. So now it's just a matter of highlighting everything. Pressing control A and control enter. So now that the code has been executed, we can now go ahead and use these procedures. So watch this. With nothing selected, I'll now go to fem control. 
Just highlight that and press Control Enter, and you can see Maya will go through and select the, the right controls now. And then for the second character, if we were to go ahead and highlight that procedure, hit Control Enter, you can see that Maya has gone through and selected those control objects. All right, so what I'd recommend now is adding this to your shelf. With these procedures, you wouldn't want to just add the procedures command. Otherwise, you always have to reference back the entire code when you reopen your file. So I'd highly recommend doing this. We'll want to, for the first procedure, just copy its command name, go to the end of our code, which is after the curly bracket, paste, and put in a semicolon so my knows to go ahead and run this entire procedure. We'll do the same thing for the second code. We'll just go ahead and copy the command name, put it at the very end, and put a semicolon. All right, so now we can add these to our shelf. So I'll just go ahead and highlight the first part. Middle click and drag, add. We'll do the same thing for the second code. Just highlight everything and go ahead and add that to the shelf. We now close this out, test it. So this should select the first character, great. This should select the second. And now we can go in and rename these. So I'll just quickly head over to the shelf editor, scroll all the way down. I've added this to the animation shelf, by the way. So feel free to create your own if you'd like. So going to the first code, we'll rename that to select female one we can always use this as our tooltip copy paste so to get a little bit more specific for our tooltip we can say this will select our female one control objects and then for the icon label, we'll label this Fem. And now go to the second one, do the same thing. Just go ahead and paste in what we've already copied. Select female two is what will be the name of this code. Oh. Go ahead and go back to that. And now we can go ahead and paste again. Rename this to select female two control objects. And the icon label will be Fem two. Okay, great. So with that now in place, let's say we go ahead and start animating. So I'll head over to our preferences. Underneath animation, we'll switch this to blocking mode. So that's linear stepped. Choose save. We will grab the controls of female 2. Let's also go to our character set just to keep track of where we're setting our keys, and we'll go ahead and begin. So on frame six, keeping in mind how she is leaping forward, it's going to be at somewhat of a diagonal. It's not going to be straight on. So with that said, we can go to frame six and go ahead and have her translate forward. I'm using local mode, by the way, for the move tool. And then once we have translated her forward, we can then go ahead and press Shift W to set translate keys. And what I'd recommend doing is going in and actually turning on auto key to speed up the king process. An initial key has been set on, on both rigs on frame negative 10. That's for motion blur. But on negative 10, we can go back to the character's bind pose if we need to for whatever reason. So it's just a matter of putting in negative 10 on your start time. Notice the characters pop back. Then the animation begins on frame one. All right, so the characters move forward. We also want her up forward since she has kind of hopped off of that foot. So we'll have her, again, move forward a, a bit more and make sure she's translated up for the hop. Great. And then what's also going to happen here, she's, as she's swinging that, sword forward as she's prepared for that naturally the front leg is going to start swinging back so have that start to be brought back and rotated back and out 
I'll be very careful not to rotate the center of gravity control unless it's necessary. Again, that also helps to avoid twisting issues in the animation. So if we need to twist, we can use our chest and hip controls. So I'll go ahead and start to have the hip rotate out. The leg back. Adjust the knee a little bit more. And then for the foot that has just hopped off, we we'll want that to start moving forward. So we're going to have that translated forward. All right, great. We could also rotate the foot up. Then we can grab the knee and kind of bring that in. Want to always make sure we're achieving adventure, adventurous poses, something that's very exciting. So let's make sure we aim for that. Okay, great. So now what we can uh, do with the sword is kind of have that rotate down for anticipation before the swing. And make sure that it's done on frame six. Then I'll have that brought back just a little bit more, translating the arm back. And by the way, the, the sword is constrained to our arm control. Here's our sword control. You can see that it's free to animate any offsets. But if we were to hit the up arrow, there's a group that... It's tied to that has been constrained. If you'd like to learn more about preparing props for animation, feel free to take a look at our Animating with Props tutorial. But what I'll now do is focus on the silhouette, kind of make sure we're getting a really strong but natural looking pose. Because of the arm moving back the way it has, we can add a little bit more twist to the, the chest. And then have the forward arm kind of move out a bit more and rotate out. And of course, naturally, the shoulder would need to rotate out and back. We'll do a slight change to the right shoulder also because we've changed the position of that arm. And then for the character's neck, go ahead and have that rotated and the head also so it's kind of pointing at where the red character is targeting. Now, just to push this a little bit further before we end this lesson, we'll have the center of gravity kind of rotate more forward. And then we'll take the chest control and rotate that back for a bit more flexibility in the pose. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. It's looking pretty good. I might want to take the left leg and move that in a little bit more. Then grab the knee control and move that and also to prevent some weird deformations in the leg. And now to finish up, let's go ahead and bring that arm, her right arm more forward so we can prevent the, the locking we were getting into. Okay, great. So there is our initial pose. Could always push this further. F feel free to take a look at my, my end file just to have an idea of, of the, the final pose that was used. But this is very close to it. But there we have it. So you can see I've added that key on frame 8. No problem at all. It's just a matter of middle clicking on frame 6. And now we can press the S key to lock that pose in. Go back to frame 8. Right click and delete. Alright, so we have our second pose blocked in for the villain. Let's say we go ahead and continue this process in the next lesson.